75 bucks. It's a pretty good deal, Ronnie. I wish I had the money. Maybe I'll have Santa Pa get it for me for Christmas. <laughs> get it, Santa Pa? Uh, who's Santa Pa? You know, my pops. Ask Santa. Santa Pa. Never mind. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, you better tell Santy Pops to get down here fast, because that camera's not going to last very long. All right, Ronnie. Hold it for me if you can. I'm going to go tell Pop right now. <laughs> I know what I want for Christmas, Pa. Ronnie has a camera whoa, out there. Whoa, 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 whoa. I'm not buying anything from that scumbag Ronnie. You're just gonna have to find your Christmas present on the inner screen on one of those Cyclops Monday deals like normal people. I looked online, they're all sold out everywhere. Nobody's got them. He's got it for a good price too. I don't even think he knows what he has. How do you even know this camera works? It's probably broken. Nah, I ran an empty through it. It works. Motor runs and everything, it should be good to go. Even if it doesn't work, it's still a good deal. All right, all right, if that's what you want, that's what you're gonna get for Christmas, whether it works or not. All right, Ronnie, where's that camera that my kid wants? Oh, that's too bad, you're too late. You snooze, you lose. I already sold it to that gentleman there. He's a real affectionate Nato. <laughs> oh, hey, Terrell, what's up? Check out this sweet camera I just bought. I've been looking for one of these babies everywhere and they're all sold out. Hey, let me take your picture. Say geez. Here you go. All right, flippers. Show me that camera. Sorry, Terrell. It's not for sale. There's plenty of other cameras over there for sale. Why don't you get one of those? That's the camera that Junior said he wants. That's the only camera he wanted. Show me that camera. Oh, it's for Junior. Well, why didn't you say so? Because now you're definitely not getting it. I'll see you later, Dweeb. <laughs> hey, Carol. Why don't you buy your kid this camera? Still got three pictures left on it. It's from 2006, but probably still good. I'm not buying anything! Pterodactyl here. And today's video is going to be on this here Briggs and Scranton 900 series overhead valve engine. Now this engine is less than two years old and it was on a track back. So it got very little use. And this is what we found. The guy was using it and all of a sudden he said it just stopped running. Now as you can tell by looking at the condition of it, it's pretty clean. It's not all dirty. Now watch the valves when I pull it over. And we got the spark plugs in. Valves aren't opening and closing. So we know we got a problem with the camshaft. So now we're gonna pull this side cover off, take a peek at that camshaft. So first thing I need to do is drain all the oil out of it. And of course the oil, if you look at it, isn't even dirty. You can still see through it. Let me pour a little bit out. It's not that bad. Now remember, it's almost two years old. So let me pull the side cover off. All right, I got the oil drained out, most of it. Let's see what's inside here. They do make this engine with, with that plastic camshaft. And I, I think they, I think you have a cam option. I think you can buy a metal one or the plastic one. Why would you even, if you got that, why would you even offer the, oh, this dipstick. All right, I gotta get a socket for that. All right, let's get this cover off. Got this low oil shutdown switch on there too.
Come on, little doggy. There we go. Oh, it's got a metal camshaft in it. Let me get this off. Come on. There we go. Oh, it's got the metal camshaft. And this is for the low oil shutdown. Here's a compression release. But look what's plastic. <laughs> look at it. The crankshaft gear. That's what failed. It broke. All right, let's spin it over. So there's a little little nub that's on there that holds this in place and look it was just spinning on there isn't that crazy plastic come on now should be ashamed of himself there's a push rod so the rod's good we just need to get that gear so I'll order a new gear hopefully it's metal and I'll get a new sump gasket and then we'll file a warranty on this where's that plastic nub I don't feel it nice nice bit of engineering let's put a plastic gear on the on the crankshaft all right well gotta order the parts we'll see you in a couple days when I get the parts, and then I'll wear the green, I'll wear the green sweatshirt. Well, they don't make this gear anymore, and they don't make a metal replacement, but they are going to cover it under warranty. So what we have to do is change the entire crankshaft. So I got a new crankshaft for it. And the new crankshaft comes with a metal gear, and it doesn't have that little, uh-oh. Oh, that's slippers. He's taking the garbage out for me. The new gear is on a key, just like they did on the older engines, because I had an older one of these engines, and I popped the cover off to see what it had inside, and it had this crankshaft in it. So for some reason, they decided to go to this nylon gear which obviously was a bad decision but they are going to pay the warranty on it so what we need to do is take out the crankshaft I have to put my spectacles on so I could see so these are 8 millimeter or 5 sixteenths and I need to get a short one so I can get in there and crack these loose. You're gonna have to turn the crankshaft in a position where I can get in there with the wrench. And then we gotta flip it around and take the flywheel off. All right, there we go trying to pivot it so we can see in there better see if I can get in there with my battery ratchet Slippers taking out the garbage. Put that back in there. All right, so now we'll flip her around. And we'll start taking all this off. We 
uh, loosen up this air cleaner. Now we got that whole blower shot. See, this thing's got no time on it. Look how clean it is in there. Nylon gear. All right, so now we need to take that flywheel nut off. What size is that? 15 sixteenths? Yes, sirree. We'll use our half inch drive factory impact. Take that off. Take off the plastic fan shroud. And then we get a little pry bar. And a hammer. And carefully put a little tension on it. Off comes the flywheel. It's got a little alternator. Oh, kind of slightly sheared the key a little bit. Maybe when it abruptly shut off. So I'll throw a new key in there. Spin her back around. Now we got to turn it. Let me get some vice grip or some channel locks. And there we go. There's our our crankshaft. Here's our new one. I'll make sure it's all nice and clean. Let's get this out of the way. This is scrap metal now. And we'll get our gel lube, which we sell in our online store. This is good assembly, engine assembly lube. We'll spray some of it. Oh, look at that. It's all dirty. Make sure everything's clean. Spray a little on that journal there. We'll reinsert it. We'll spray some on there. Our can is a little cold. All right, I'm gonna flip it up like this. It's gonna be harder for him to, to see. Spray a little on the cap. If we can get a couple threads started and then I can use the connecting rod. Get the one in the bottom started. Then we can kind of turn it once we get one of these in. Short one on there. See if I can get this other one. Nope. There we go. Can I get it? Nope. 
100 inch pounds torque on this connecting rod. All right, now we can turn it. I still got the spark plug in. Let me get my uh, torque wrench. And then we'll see if we can get that torque. There's a good position. We'll go a couple, we'll just go gradually back and forth. We turn it some more. Come on, you rascal. Get another bite, there we go. Use this screwdriver to kind of hold it on there for me. We flip this thing. We turn it like this. Hundred. Hundred. I'll go back and check it again. Tricky part. There we go. It's getting a good bite on it. All right, 100 inch pounds, just like they asked for. Lay it back like that so you can see it. Make sure this is all clean. We'll put our lifters in. Spray a little gel lube on them. Get our camshaft. This is our compression release right here. Make sure that works. Make sure there's no debris on here. And then we'll find our timing mark, which is right here. Looks like there's some pieces of gasket in there. All right, grab that out of there. So right around there. Check all this. We'll spray some assembly lube on there, on the lobes. So we got some sticky lubricant. When we go to fire it up, fire it up, fire it up. There we go. Now this gear looks identical to that and there was a washer, a shim washer on there. So no instructions or anything in there. We'll put this shim washer back on. Spray a little 
gel lube on here and on this journal. I got a new crank crankcase gasket. Open this up. Make sure we don't cut into the gasket. Where is that edge of that gasket? I don't want to cut it. Gotta be careful when you open these gaskets. The new gasket. Make sure we got all our gasket material off. We got a clean surface. Make sure this surface is clean. This is our low oil shutdown switch here. And these are our governor gears. Now, you can put some gasket sealer on here if you like. I could spray it with some uh, high tech. But the gasket does have silicone impregnated in it. There's a little silicone rib on there. So basically, you really don't need. thing on there. It's like a puzzle. Hope I ordered the right gasket. Come on Terrell you knucklehead. There you go knucklehead. I was worried there for a second. I had to flip her around. All right, let's make sure there's nothing else in there. Got our gasket on. Put our cover on. Oh, what fell out? Oh, there's that little piece of plastic for that nylon gear. Good thing that thing fell off. A little bit of oil in there. Let me get that oil out. Mop that up real quick. All right, we got this all cleaned up. The seal is still good. No sense in replacing the seal. It didn't leak. Like I said, there's no time on this engine. But we will put a little oil on the seal. And we may have to help the lip of the seal a little bit so we don't roll it. And to get the, the gears to mesh a lot of times, you might have to rotate it a little bit. We'll get a little tap, a little love tap. We don't want to force it or draw it down with any bolts. We want to want to pop on by itself. Trying to hold this thing up. Fighting me. Wow. 
what's holding us up here? The end of the camshaft. Not lining up. Usually these covers pop right on. There we go. Just had to give it a little wiggles worth. Had to pick up on the crank a little bit. All right, so here's our bolts. And they want these at 110 inch pounds. So I'm gonna go ahead and put those in. And we'll torque them down. socket Now that we got that all back on, let's uh, make sure everything rotates. Still got the plug in it. All right, goes around, check our end play. We got a little bit of end play there, that's what we need. Now I'll just go ahead and in a cross pattern, torque these down to 110, gradually. All right, I'm gonna hook up our low oil shutdown wire since I'm on this side. There's a screw for that. For our dipstick. You ever been called a dipstick before? Hey, you dipstick. Why would you call somebody a dipstick? What does that even mean? That they're low on oil? <laughs> All right, one of our little caps fell off. We were messing around. Put that back on. <clears throat> Some kind of, there's our push rods. Gotta kind of feel around and make sure they get in the end. You know what? I'm gonna go ahead and put the flywheel back on because that way I can turn the flywheel. All right, I got the flywheel reinstalled with a new flywheel key. 60 foot pounds is what they want that flywheel nut torqued at. So it's kind of hard to see down in here. So you gotta kind of feel for the for that to get in the end of the tap it the push rod there it's going up and down all right so we got that in so I'm just gonna push on it, push on the valve. Oop.
Now I'll spin it by hand and make sure it's going up and down. Yep. All right. We'll do the same for this one. You can put a little lube on the end of it. It'll get there if you if you forgot. It'll get lube on it as soon as it starts up. All right. Let's see if the other one's going up and down. There we go. All right, we're all good. So since we didn't change the camshaft or any of that, you might want to check your valve clearances. They seem like they're, they're right. They shouldn't have changed, especially on this engine. If you got an older engine, it may be wore in. But again, we didn't change the cam. So, our lash on our valve shouldn't have changed at all. Now all we gotta do is put the blower shroud back on. Fill it with dinosaur syrup. Get these wires out of there. And then reinstall it on the vac, on the track vac. Make sure our wires aren't getting pinched. There's a lot of wires going on here. We got this module here. This is for the low oil shutdown. This little thing. This little box. Get that started. Get them all started by hand and then we'll go ahead and snug them down. So we're gonna go ahead and check the valve lash anyway because I heard a bunch of y'all clamoring. You're not being doing a thorough job, Carol. You should check those valve clearances since you got that valve cover off. So that's what I'm gonna do. Now there's a couple ways you can do it. You can take the plug out and mess around with trying to figure out if the piston is at top dead center, or you can pull the motor over until one valve is fully open, and then you know the other valve is fully closed. Now they recommend four on the intake and six thousandths on the exhaust. So I got a four thousandths here, and that feels good. It's not sloppy, it's got a little drag on it. Again, this, this thing's got about three hours on it, four hours tops. Now we got this valve fully open. And let me get a six thousandths. There's our six. And there we go, six thousandths. It's not real loose and it's not tight. It's got a little drag on it. See, pulling the, pulling the rocker so you know it's dragging on there. There's your dinner. I gotta put the valve cover back on, put the musket on, fill it with dinosaur syrup. Put this back on, put the air cleaner back on. There's a lot of back on going, going around here. Now my experience with this air filter assembly on these track back motors, I actually like the one that uses the square panel over this one, is these shoulder bolts work their way loose. Cause every fall I got customers coming in looking for these bolts cause their air cleaner done fell off. So I'm gonna put some Loctite on there, some blue Loctite, some, some thread locker, which we sell in our online store. Here's a little baby bottle we got here of some blue. So I'm gonna put some blue on them threads. And again, this engine's got no time on it. 
and I think originally this had some kind of yellow thread locker on it from the factory. So this should, the blue should keep it from coming off. I don't want to go with red because that's kind of permanent and then in the future you may have trouble getting it off and if that's the case then sometimes you end up breaking the hardware. I know on those crawler engines they would lock tight those little screws like this on there then you go to take them off that blower shroud, shroud and then they were loctited in there and corroded into the aluminum. And then the next thing, they're snapping them off. And it's not easy drilling those little teeny tiny screws out and retapping them. So blue is removable. Snug them up a little with the socket wrench. But these are these are little screws, so you got to be careful. You can't snap them off. So you got to use good judgment there, nice and tight. All right, so we'll put the muffin back on and throw some oil in it. Dinosaur juice. These are the muffin screws. Well, got it all back together. Got dinosaur syrup in it. Let's fire it up, fire it up, fire it up. I'm gonna put it on half throttle. Get it, boy, get it. So we don't have to run it at full. I'll just have it on half. Switch on, gotta have this on. And let's put it on choke. And. That was a warranty, and they covered it, Briggs and Scranton. They both contacted me. So, subscribe to this YouTube channel, Terrell Fixes All. This is me in my festive sweatshirt. This is toasty warm, too. This nice, green, warm, toasty warm, Terrell Fixes All sweatshirt. You need to get one. Go to our web store and get one. Follow me with your engines on Facebook and Instagram. And as always, there's your dinner. Woo! Dinner warranty! Brings paid for it. The guy will be happy. Made it just under the wire. Now all I gotta do is install it back on the track back so he can finish picking pick up his leaves. Second week of December, people are still using their lawnmowers here in Podunk. We're not even worried about snowblowers. They're, they're uh, still bringing in tractors. I got 13 tractors out there at all times. As soon as we fix a few, more are coming in. It's like springtime and wintertime. Woo! There's your dinner. <laughs> well, what do you think, Junior? This wasn't what I expected. What are you talking about? That's the camera that Ronnie said you wanted. Yeah, I'll tell you anything to make a sale. There's still three pictures left in it. So why don't you take a picture of me? Looks like it's from 2006. This film can't be any good still. Who could that be? Slippers. What do you want? Ho, 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 Santa Claus is here. What, what are you talking about? Here, this is for you, Junior. Merry Christmas. What, what is this? Some kind of joke? No, it's for you. Merry Christmas. Oh, that's like 70. What is this? You're giving me this? Yeah, Merry Christmas. That's for oh. me to you. Wow. Thank you, Slippers. That's awesome. Merry Christmas. Yeah, no you problem. You see that, Paul? Hold on, Slippers. Not so fast. I got something for you.
Merry Christmas. Oh, thanks, Cheryl. What the look could this be? See what we got here. Oh, oh, you didn't have to, Cheryl. Oh, slippers. I love them. Yeah, they're nice and warm, too. Yeah, these look great. Thanks. Well, thank you, Cheryl. This is great. You're welcome. Yeah, you're welcome, slippers. Yeah, thank no you. No problem, Junior. Well, hope you guys have a great Christmas and, uh, Happy New Year! All right, see you, Slipper. All right, All right. thanks, Slippers. Really yeah. appreciate it. Merry Christmas. Yeah, no problem. Take care, man. All right, you too, buddy. No problem. From all of us here at Grass Rats Garage, we like to wish all our fans a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays, and a Happy New Year. And, and then.